Hi guys, Michael with ArmchairBuilder.com here. It's so important to get the foundation for a new home right that we're going to take a deep dive into what quality features are needed to avoid problems. If we get the foundation right, it will last for generations. Get it wrong and your new home foundation can be an expensive headache for as long as you own the home. So there are three critical components to a home's foundation and those are the soil beneath that supports the foundation, the waterproofing and drainage that surrounds the whole foundation, and then lastly, the foundation structure itself. Now, because these three components are so complicated, we're going to cover them in a three-part video series. Today, I wanna to share with you the first part of the series, the foundation structural engineering for a new home with a basement. I will share with you some best practices that will help keep your home's foundation free of structural problems and basement water leaks. The foundation is such a critical element of any home. Not only does it support the entire home and its contents, but it also houses everything in the basement. Things like hot water heaters, furnaces, laundry appliances are expensive items that need to stay dry. On top of that, many of us will finish the basement at some point in time, so it's imperative that the foundation does its job. So let's take a look at the engineering behind a quality poured concrete foundation. So here's a quick look at what the foundation looks like after it's been poured. You can see the brick pattern in there and also the footing sticking out below the wall down there that's supporting the wall. Uh, the brick pattern is because they use those brick forms that have that pattern in them. First start by showing you guys the anatomy of a typical poured foundation concrete wall system here. And um, this is a cross-sectional view. So if you cut the house in half, this is what it would look like. Um, we start with the footing which in our case for the open book build was 16 inches wide and eight inches deep. And then the second pour that's poured first. Then the wall is set up on top of that, the forms, and we pour that. For our case, we went with a nine foot tall wall because we're going with a finished basement in the future and we wanted plenty of headroom to make it feel like the traditional you know, living space. That wall was eight inches thick, nine feet tall. And then later on, we come in and pour the basement floor which actually rests on that little ledge here uh, that's left over four or five inches of foundation of footing. And uh, so when anyone uh, quotes you a nine foot tall basement wall, you have to subtract that four inches for the basement floor to get the head height um, from the top. You know, you're gonna be standing on top of this basement floor down there when we're finished. Here you can see we're actually using a pump truck to put concrete between the forms there. Um, to go ahead and get those filled in so then we can level it off and uh, and then let it set up, remove the forms, and then build the foundation walls on top of that. So we put three strands of rebar, seen in this photo here, in the bottom of these footings um, to give it support. Uh, along the full length of the footing. So here's a look at it shooting down through the footing forms and kind of what that looks like before we pour. You can see the uh, rebar three strands along the bottom of the footing. They're, the lengths are tied where the ends of the rebar are. See these ridges in the rebar? That grabs onto the concrete. So if they were smooth, they wouldn't hold on as well. So the concrete's gonna go around those rebar and it's gonna really latch onto it with those ridges to, to really give it strength. These chairs are here, that black chair holds the rebar three, two to three inches off the ground, which gives it maximum support. And then you can see these nails right here show where the top of the footing needs to be poured to, to be level. We wanna make sure this footing is level because everything above that builds off of it. So if the footing's level, the wall, foundation wall will be level and then the framing will be level. So really important there. So here's another cross-sectional view of the footing with the three strands of rebar in the bottom. So here's a quick look looking from the outside of the foundation at the foundation wall and footing. Now this is a little bit of an exaggeration, but you can see this void created here on the right side under the footing where there's settlement taking place in the ground beneath the footing. And what happens is if there's no rebar in that footing, it wants to settle there. And this settlement can lead to cracking in the footing and the wall above and eventually potentially a settlement in those where they actually move down, creating a structural problem for this house. So the three strands of rebar in the bottom of the footings are a best practice. And this is probably a good time to say that not every crack in the foundation wall is a structural problem. When you wanna be concerned from a structural standpoint is if the crack displaces or moves, and this can be in the form of a vertical displacement as just mentioned with settlement, or it can be in a horizontal displacement. 
And remember, any kind of displacement in a wall crack can cause a breach in the waterproofing membrane, which can lead to water leaking into your basement, which we obviously do not want. So now let's take a look at the engineering behind the poured concrete foundation wall. Um, we're placing the concrete between the forms here, and once everything's done and we're ready to backfill, our excavation contractor starts to fill in around the foundation. And this starts to put a lot of pressure on that wall. Um, you can see here the arrows indicating the pressure on the outside of the foundation wall, which wants to bow that wall in. So in order to counteract those forces, we put steel rebar in the wall. And these are the vertical rebar every three feet along the length of the wall from the footing. We also put horizontal rebar in the wall. It's hard to see here, but they're sticking out one in the lower third, middle, and top of the wall where they're forming up here. So here's a plan view of the foundation wall, for looking at it from the outside, the footing and the wall here. And you can see the vertical rebar every 36 inches along the length of the wall, number six rebar. And then we've got these horizontal rebar, one at the top third, one in the middle, and one in the bottom third. And that works like a, kind of like a belt on a pair of pants holding everything together on this wall so that we really have a solid wall that's gonna hold together and counteract those forces from the outside. So one other critical piece to that foundation wall pour is making sure they don't leave any voids in it. So we want it to be one solid mass so any kind of voids will create a weak spot in the wall. So they, they're very careful at placing that concrete to make sure that all of the gaps between the forms are full. So another best practice guys for foundations is to use a minimum design strength uh, for the concrete of the footings of 2,500 pounds per square inch. And then for the walls, design strength of a minimum 3,000 pounds per square inch. So that does it for house foundation engineering. We'll be posting two other very important parts to this video series in the coming weeks, which will cover the soil below the footings and the foundation waterproofing and drainage systems around the foundation. If you need more information about building or repairing your home, stop by and see me at armchairbuilder.com. Thanks for watching.